Hi, I'm Susan Brooks. I am a law school admissions consultant with Admissions Consultants. I was formerly an admissions officer at Georgetown Law in Washington, D.C. and at New York Law School in New York City. And I'm here to talk to you about a number of things to be mindful about when you are thinking about going to law school, preparing to go to law school, and what to do after you've applied. One of the most difficult situations you might face as a law school applicant is how to handle a waitlist decision from a school you really want to attend. Should you bombard the school with additional material, or should you sit tight fearing that unsolicited material will annoy the admissions committee? The golden rule is, follow the instructions from the admissions committee. If the school says that you should not send additional material, don't do it, even though you're anxious to let them know how interested you are. If you disregard their request, that's not going to play to your advantage. While you want to remain in contact, be careful not to overdo it. When I was at Georgetown, we had an applicant submit more than 10 additional letters of recommendation, hoping to convince us he would attend our school. I knew he was going to attend our school if we let him in, but I was also concerned about the kind of student he would be once he arrived on campus. We also suggest that an applicant remain positive and thoughtful while on a wait list. Many people who are placed on the wait list and aren't accepted decide to apply to transfer to that school a year later. Candidates who are thoughtful and liked during the application process one year will be thought of positively the next. In addition, someone who does not present well as a potential 1L is going to have a more difficult time. I read many letters of continued interest which were generic and not very convincing. A better approach is to be specific regarding the reasons you want to attend the school and why the school is a good fit for you. Schools use waitlists to control yield. They have a number in mind of how many students they want to enroll. But admissions isn't an exact science. If too many students accept an offer to enroll, the class is going to be too big. If too few accept, it's going to be too small. To avoid the latter, admissions offices maintain the wait lists. If someone declines an offer of admission, the office is going to review the applications on the wait list and consider admitting one. The list isn't ranked, but they do use it to maintain diversity. So you're most likely to be admitted if a person with a similar background as yours declined admission. Many schools have large wait lists and only expect to admit a few, if any, from it. In addition, wait lists are often used to craft the class later in the admission cycle. In May and June, when schools look to their wait list, the admission staff has a pretty good idea of what the class is going to look like. So they often use the wait list to balance or to solidify certain aspects, like the GPA and LSAT medians, the gender balance, diversity numbers, geographic distribution, etc. Some schools review their waitlist in April or May after their first deposits are due. Therefore, some candidates on a waitlist may hear of their fate quickly, while others may not hear until August. You should determine how long you're willing to wait. Set a date, and if you haven't been admitted by then, accept another school and ask to be removed from that school's waitlist. Being on a waitlist certainly causes anxiety, but try to be patient. The school obviously saw strengths in your application and they just need time to reevaluate it. Schools always accept people from the waitlist later in the process, and you're still in the game. If you've got a pressing question about the admissions process, please don't hesitate to call us at 703-242-5885. We have the expertise, and we are here to help.